I mentioned the other day that I was researching one day all of my friends and all of the extended members of my community here. And I suddenly realized how many of them were three fives. And it really gave me a flavor of what this island attracts. Um, when you're dealing with a third line personality, first of all, from the health point of view, let's talk about the psychology because the psychology is very important. The third line personality is going to be in touch with the failures of the world. And they're going to take that in at a psychic level and at a psychological level. They're going to take that in very, very deeply. These are the people that look out in the world and say the world doesn't work. These are the people that want to save the world. You know, they want to save you. They want to save the world. Often, often that can be very painful for those who want to be saved. But that's another story. They are martyrs after all, and they're martyr heretics. And that third line personality lives a life of trial and error. Now look, we all come from, all of us here come from cultures that punish mistakes. They punish them. Third line beings live with a lot of pain in their life because those beings that are closest to them, that love them the most, punish them all the time. And I don't mean by that physical punishment. I mean psychological punishment. Why can't you get that right? Why can't you do it correctly? Why do you always have to make a mistake? Why do you always have to blunder? Why can't you have a relationship that lasts? Why can't you stay with anything? And of course, if you're getting that from people who love you and nurture you, parents, siblings, teachers, friends, lovers, that begins to be a deep burden. And many people break under that burden and they run away. Three fives run away a lot. They run away hoping that once they figured something out, they don't have to walk around with people always remembering that they're the ones that are always making the mistakes, that they can start fresh somewhere else. And they're great at doing that, breaking a bond with their family, their community, their country, their race, their religion, breaking the bond and running away to try to start somewhere else where there are no mistakes. You go to the ashrams of the world and you're going to find all these third line beings. Nothing works. Maybe my guru can help me. And then they discover that their guru doesn't work. Oh, and they're really messed up then. Nothing works. This is an unholy planet. And they suffer deeply. So there are psychological wounds in the third line personality. And those psychological wounds can only be dealt with by proper nurturing. You see, every time your child makes a mistake, you have to be able to say, great, great, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Great, not you know, what's the matter with you that it didn't work? The whole thing is to understand that it's positive for them to see that finding things don't work enriches their life and the lives of others. Then they can be good martyrs. They can say, I know that this dogma is a lie. Don't follow this dogma. It's a lie and you can kill me if you want. You can destroy me if you like, but I know it doesn't work. That's what a martyr's here for. That's what the anarchist is here for, the third line theme. The anarchist doesn't know what to replace anything with. The anarchist doesn't know the future. The job of the anarchist is it sees something that doesn't work and it tears it down. <laughs> That's the third line being. So when the third line being sexually is in a relationship, when it sees it doesn't work, it tears it down. Breaking bonds can be ugly. Breaking bonds can be painful. Sometimes you've got to smash the chains. Sometimes you've got to burn them. So that the third line being in its relationship, when it finds out that it doesn't work, ends up on the cross as the martyr or puts the other one on the cross as the martyr. You see, when the third line being understands that finding out what doesn't work is its way, and that's a holy way, 
It's also going to see that all relationships are trial and error. They are trial and error to wait for that moment of discovery. And that moment of discovery is something that comes and bangs right into them. Because they're a third line being. It just bangs into them and they've got to wait for it to come. Now not only do they wait for it to come, but they're tricky, eh? They've got a fifth line unconscious. They are unconscious seducers. They are unconscious heretics. And they are pulling all of those things that are going to bang into them, into them, without knowing it. Without knowing it. Think about the health of the three five. These are people that are at risk for anybody that is dealing with the real, full, holistic well-being of a human being. If you see a three five, if you deal with three fives, please understand that they require additional attention. You see, they get it both ways. They are accident prone because of the presence of the third line but they are also open to deep infection and becoming infecting forces because of their fifth-line vehicle. What happens to the three fives is that as they move through life and life shows them more and more mistakes, they become more and more paranoid. Give me a place where I can hide from everybody. Give me a place where I don't have to deal with anybody's mistakes. And of course, they carry it with them. After all, they carry it with them. Now the three five sexuality, the three five sexuality is the you know the banner of divorce. I mean it holds divorce high above its head and says, This is what I am here for. I am here to find you or you find me, I am here to fuck you or you fuck me, and I'm here to leave you, and that's it. That's the three five. The three five says, I'm really promiscuous, let's try. And the five underneath says, come on, come on, come on, we can do it. And then, of course, the third line personality is ready to move on. It wants to break the bond. Yes, that was very nice, okay. You know, but I, I don't want you to spend too much time with me. You know, I, that fifth line starts saying, well, you know... Let me back up a bit. I don't want to be overwhelmed by you. I don't want to be infected by you. You see, the third line sexually always says the same thing. You will never, ever, ever have power over me. Never. Never. And that's their deepest paranoia. So three, five relationships have to be bizarre in a sense to really work. There has to be the built-in space so that they can have that away from each other opportunity to reconnect, to reform the bond. They must. And remember that this is martyr heretics. You know, when their relationships go bad, it's ugly. It's ugly. Now, all of these descriptions that I've just given you about the three five, I'm talking about the three five not self. I'm not talking about somebody who's living out their strategy. If you live out your strategy as a three five, whatever that strategy is, whatever type you are, whatever your authority is, then you will enter into the correct relationship you will seduce the correct being to bang into you. Now, by the way, that doesn't mean that you found your soulmate. And it doesn't mean that the relationship is going to be a bed of roses because if you're a 3-5, there's no bed of roses ever. You know, the eternal princess and the pea. You know, there is never a bed of roses, but, 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 that relationship is the right relationship. And out of that can come a healthy process. Out of that can come a recognition that there is a deep attraction and yet at the same time there is this need for space that the third line always, always demands. Let me have my own room. Let me wake up in my own aura. Let me see if I see you in the morning across the hall whether I want to have anything to do with you or not. <laughs> Give me that freedom. 
And if I don't want to have anything to do with you, don't get paranoid and stop loving me.